Today I'm going to show you how to create some procedural brushes to use for texture painting. This is something that I really wish I knew how to do when I first started using Blender. It's actually the reason I first became interested in procedural textures. When I tried to create my own textures using texture painting, I found it pretty difficult and I got pretty poor results. But using a method like this would have really made it so much easier for me. So in this tutorial, first I'm going to show you how to set up a texture. Uh, this one here, it kind of looks like a wood grain. And then I'll show you how to use it as a brush and even add some bump and displacement, which I thought was pretty cool. By the way, if you like what I do and you want to support me, you can do so on Gumroad or Patreon. I've got a lot of cool stuff available for my supporters, including my favorite project files I've completed over the years, and all my blend files from my tutorials, including brushes I made for this and my most recent tutorial. So let's start by making a texture we can use for our uh, texture painting brush. And I'm going to delete this cube and bring in a plane just by hitting Shift A and selecting plane. I'm going to go into top view by hitting 7 on the number pad and then period to center in on my plane and then hit Control alt and 0 to center my camera on that plane. I'm going to change the dimensions of my plane, or pardon me, my camera, by going to Output Properties and going 1080 by 1080. Then I'm going to grab my camera, hit it G and then Z, and then move it closer to the plane so that I'm just catching the edge there. I'm not getting any background. I'm going to scroll down and go to Color Management and select Override. I'm going to change it from Filmic to Standard. The reason I do this is because when I render it out in Filmic, the whites won't actually appear white, uh, but I want them to, so I'm going to change it to Standard instead. You also want to make sure it's set on PNG and RGBA with the alpha channel in there, uh, because I want some transparency for the way that I'm going to do this. I'm going to split my screen and change the left side to the shader editor, and we can start creating that uh, material there. I'm going to select my plane and just put that same material that was on our cube onto our plane. I'm going to get rid of this principal BSDF though. We won't need that. I'm going to start by bringing in a Musgrave texture. So I'll hit Shift A and then search and just start typing in Musgrave and bring it in. And uh, let's hit Control Shift left click on that to get a preview going. And if it's not showing up, you just need to enable rendered mode on the right here by hovering over the three viewport, holding down Z and moving your mouse up. You should see your Musgrave there. By the way, that shortcut where I hit uh, Control Shift and left click to get the preview, you need to enable Node Wrangler. So if it's not working, just go to Edit Preferences, Add-ons, and type in Node right here. And you should see this uh, Node Wrangler here. Just make sure that box is checked and that shortcut should work. I'm going to click on this Musgrave and hit Control T. And that's actually another Node Wrangler shortcut. It brings up this texture coordinate and mapping node. And I'm going to change to the object output from that texture coordinate. And then I'm going to change the scale on this mapping node on the uh, X scale there to 4. So it's stretched on a certain axis. Certain axis. I'm going to move these two nodes up for a second. And I will do more stuff to this Musgrave no uh, node in a bit, but I'm not going to worry about it for a moment here. I'm going to bring in a noise texture and just place it right here. Run object into vector. And uh, then I'm going to bring in a mix RGB. Place it right here and run object into color 2 and then the color from the noise into color one. Let's look at this here. This is just a controller for how much noise I have um, in my mix here. So I'm gonna leave this on 0.5 actually. And I'm gonna bring this scale down quite a bit to 0.5 and leave everything else the same except for the roughness. I'm gonna bring that up to one. Then I'm gonna bring in a separate X, Y, Z, place it here. And I'm gonna come out of the Y. I'm gonna bring in a color ramp and place it right here. And I'm going to change the interpolation to B-spline. It just kind of softens things up a little bit. I'm going to bring the white down to 0.186. And I'm going to bring the black up to 0.714. And I'm going to change the color to a gray. And the hex code is going to be 7F7F7F. I'm going to take this color output from the color ramp and plug it into the scale on this Musgrave texture. And then I'll just create a few reroutes to make this easier to read uh, just by holding down shift and right clicking and dragging through that noodle there. So just to makes it a lot easier there. Let's look at this Musgrave and I'm going to change this to 4D so we can get different iterations. And we move this through, um, you know, different options there basically. I'm going to change the detail to 8 and then the dimension to 0.1. To change this texture a little bit, I'm going to adjust the range right here before this color ramp by bringing in a map range node. I'll place it here, and you can see if I adjust this from min, it kind of uh, moves this whole area down here. 
so that it doesn't look so stretched to the bottom. I'm going to change the from min to negative 1. You can see if I adjust this w value, if I bring it up, it kind of starts to look like this wood grain right here. And you know what? This could be enough, you know, just like this for your texture if you wanted. I'm going to change it a little bit, though. I'm going to go 3.95, so it's not very stretched. And I'm going to add some more nodes. I'm going to grab this mapping node here and hit Control shift d to duplicate it while it remains attached to this texture coordinate node. And I'm going to change the scale on the X to 6 instead. Let's look at that preview there by holding down Control shift and left-clicking. And I'm going to bring in a noise texture and just place it right here so that mapping node is going into the vector there. I'm going to change this one to 4D as well. And I'm going to feed this color ramp into the scale uh, just like I did the Musgrave texture. I'm going to change the W on this here to 100 and then the detail to 8, no 7. I mean you could do 8 if you want. And the roughness to 1. Then let's uh, actually come out of the factor and go into a color ramp. On this color ramp I'm going to bring the black up to 0.436 and the white is going to come down to 0.464. Then I'm going to bring in a mix RGB place it right here and this color ramp is going to go into the factor and this musgrave that I've got back here this is actually going to go into color one and uh, color two I'm just going to change to white if we turn down the detail on this noise texture it's a little easier to see what's going on here uh, basically we've got this noise texture masking out an area where that musgrave texture can shine through so basically if we didn't have that Musgrave texture, it would just be a lot simpler. But uh, since I've got the detail at 7 there, it's a little harder to see. Uh, but it's that graininess going vertically with this noise texture uh, kind of going in waves here. I'm going to hit Shift A and bring in an emission shader. Place it right here and click on the color and just scroll down with my mouse wheel until it turns black there. Then I'm going to bring in a transparent shader. And I'm going to mix them together by holding down Control Shift and right clicking and dragging from one to the other creates this mix shader right here. I'm going to use the color output as a factor. And if I look at it right now, it's just going to be black. Uh, I know there's a way to do this in EV, but I just can't remember. So I'm going to switch to cycles for this last part. Change this to GPU compute, but it's not really necessary. Just runs a bit faster on my system. And I'm going to change this noise threshold to 0.1 so it's a little faster. Then if I go down to film, click this open, I'm going to click this transparent box. And if I hit F12, we'll render this out you should see this checkerboard pattern in the background, which is our transparency. So just make sure you save that image as a PNG. And uh, the general idea here is that we have whatever texture we want coming from this node setup here, then feeding into this mix shader with the emission and the transparency. We're going to use that as our brush. So I've opened up a new Blender file. This is where I'm going to do my texture painting. I'm going to get rid of this cube, and I'm actually going to do it on a plane instead. I'm going to change to the Cycles Render Engine and change to GPU Compute. It works a bit better for my system, but it's not necessary. If you want to leave it on CPU Compute, that's just fine. I'm also going to split the screen in the middle and then twice on the left side. I'm going to change the top left to the UV Editor and the bottom left to the Shader Editor. I'm going to make sure the plane is selected and put that material that was on our cube onto our plane. And I'm going to hit N in that Shader Editor to get rid of that shelf on the right. So to set up our texture painting, I'm going to go up to here where it says object mode. And I'm going to switch to texture paint instead. We should have this pink texture here because we haven't set anything up. Go to the active tool and workspace settings. And right here next to where it says no textures, I'm going to click this plus button and select base color. You could select any of these other ones as well, but I'm going to select base color just to keep it simple for now. We're going to choose our width and height for our resolution here. Why don't we do 2048 by 2048. We can also choose a background if we want. If we know that the texture is going to be majority of one color, we could select that. Why don't we go with like some sandy color, just for an example here. Then when you're set, hit OK. You should see your uh, material base color show up right here. And it should be already be plugged into the principal BSDF just like this. So it's kind of set up automatically for you. Then come down to this texture panel. And we're going to click New on this brush and it should be set on image or movie. We're going to go to open and load in our texture that we just created. 
So then I'm going to go back to the active tool and workspace settings here and scroll down to where it says texture. I'm just going to open this up. We should see our texture right here. We can see if we want to paint on, it should be tiling it automatically. I'm going to undo that because I actually want to make it a little larger. And I do that by hitting F and just moving my mouse uh, back and forth there. We could also increase or decrease the strength with Shift F, which is between 0 and 1. Now if we paint, it's going to be much larger. If we want to see what this looks like on our mesh, we can go to this material base color up in our UV map. And I should mention as well, if this, is, if this isn't working, we need to make sure that we're unwrapped as well. So let's say this isn't just a primitive, like the plane or the cube or whatever. This is a more complex mesh. If this isn't showing up, just make sure you go into edit mode and hit U and go to unwrap or smart UV project or whatever else. If you do smart UV project, make sure there's a little bit of island margin as well, maybe like 0 0.003. Um, for me, it doesn't matter because I've only got one surface here. But this allows you to have a little bit of a margin between your islands when you're doing your UV painting. And that allows you to not paint on two islands at once, which I've done before. And it's kind of frustrating. It doesn't really look very good. So I'm going to not do that because I've already got it set up here. Um, it's already unwrapped. So I'm going to go back to texture paint mode here. And um, we could keep drawing on our object here, but we can see this little line right here that's the end of the tile that we're setting up. So I can scroll down here and change it to something like stencil maybe. Then we have this stencil in the bottom left. We can just basically draw on the stencil and it'll draw on our mesh from there. Um, you know, that looks pretty good. We could also go to random, make sure this random box is checked right here. And this random angle allows us to have a different angle of orientation each time we press this down. So it's pretty cool if you want to get random patterns uh, each time from just the one uh, texture that you set up. You can also use this to create colors by going down to texture properties, scrolling down to where it says colors, and then going to the color ramp. I'm going to click this box here, and this allows us to create different flags here. We can then change the colors each time. So let's go maybe a bluish and a reddish color there. And now if we paint here, we can see the blue and the red as well, which is harder to see, but it should be there coming through in our texture. I'm just going to undo these for a second. And I'm going to do one more thing. We can also have this material base color influence bump or displacement on our mesh. We could also do it by adding an extra material color here, like the material bump map or displacement map. But this allows us to have one uh, image influence both at the same time, which is kind of cool. So I'm just going to add in a bump map. We can plug the color into the height and plug this into the normal here. And then if we look at the rendered mode, we can see it's got the bump map automatically set up. Let's try the same thing with displacement. We'll have to uh, adjust a couple settings, but I'm going to plug the color into the height there and then plug the displacement into the displacement there. And let's go to, first of all, the render properties. I'm going to change supported to experimental so we can do the adaptive subdivision with a subdivision surface uh, uh, modifier there. So I went to the modifiers panel and I added that modifier. Let's go adaptive subdivision and I'm going to keep it on simple for now. I'm going to go down to material properties and scroll down to where it says settings and then under displacement I'm going to change this to displacement only. I'm going to change the scale on this displacement node to something a little smaller maybe 0.1 or even smaller might look good too but this already looks pretty good and if we want we can zoom in and hit tab twice and it'll reset this displacement. It'll go a little smaller like this here. The nice thing about the texture painting is we could uh, paint more textures on top of this as well. So I'm going to go to this texture panel and let's go ahead and reset this color ramp for now. I'm going to go up to this uh, image that we loaded in right here. Let's load in a different one. I'm going to load in this one right here, which is basically just a noise texture. If I paint on here, um, let's take that displacement off for a second. If I paint on here, we can see actually nothing right away. There we go. So just make sure you're going back into object mode for a second there, and then back into rendered mode. You'll see it uh, up here. But let's undo those for a second. And I'm going to go into the active tool settings and just go to the stencil instead because I want to be a little bit more precise with what I'm doing here. And we can zoom in 
maybe hit F and move this a little further down so you have a bit more space there. And let's just paint on some, actually I'm going to zoom out here. Let's just paint on some noise textures here. There we go. So um, we can see it's kind of taken over. We could have also just done it much softer by adjusting the strength up here or with Shift F. Maybe if we go to like 0 0.2, then it's much softer effect in the background there. That's more what I'm going for. So let's just do that a few times. And there we go. And now let's set up that displacement again and go back into rendered mode. Let's turn this up. We could also use this color output to influence the roughness too. So why don't we plug that in there and I'll just bring in a color ramp so we can actually control what's going on there as well. Let's see what that looks like. So we've just got these gray tones here. The black is going to be much less rough and the ones closer to the white are going to be pretty rough. So let's say we want the opposite where those um, areas in the scratches are going to be the less rough stuff and everything else is going to be kind of smooth. Something like this here. Then let's see what that looks like. Here it is rendered out. Uh, why don't we just turn down the displacement. I'll go with like 0 0.05 and I'm going to switch these back again. So the cracks are, I guess the little divots are the smoother areas and everything else is quite rough. I'm going to switch this one that kind of looks like cracks. We can see if we paint it on, the way I've got it set up is it's got this black background there that kind of looks like a circular gradient. And it kind of messes with us if we turn on displacement. Um, you know, if we go to the adaptive subdivision and reset it while we're up close, you can see it's kind of got these concentric rings. So that may or may not be what we want. But if we want to fix that, it's actually pretty easy. Go down to this color ramp. We just change whatever color we don't want to be transparent. In this case, it's the black. So I'm going to switch the black to be alpha zero. And now if we paint on, we should just see white instead. This should solve the problem of those concentric rings. Um, we could also, if we want the displacement in the other direction, we could flip this color ramp around by going flip color ramp. And then let's paint it on and see what it looks like. In this case, we want to actually change the black to be alpha one and the white to be alpha zero in order to get the desired effect. One last tip that I found helpful. Let's say you're using the stencil method and you're trying to zoom in just the right amount and the mouse wheel is just kind of not hitting the right spot there. You can hold down control and middle mouse click and that'll zoom in more gradually so you get the exact right amount of zoom um, that you're desiring. I'm just gonna quickly recreate that image from the title there. Uh, I've got this brush here selected number one which is the one I showed at the beginning. And uh, I've got the color ramp set up so that the white has no alpha there. And the black is just regular. The black's at the top, the white's at the bottom. And I've got the brush set on random uh, with 360 degree variation. I'm just gonna drag the brush across here. Oh, I should be in uh, regular mode there. And there's the first line. I'm gonna create a flag in the middle. And um, let's do a red color here. And I'll just do this above. Then I, I'm going to do a purple color, kind of purple blue at the top here. And then let's do a green color. Something like this. And then finally kind of a pink red color here. There we go. And uh, if I go into rendered mode here, we can see it has bump properties uh, because I already set it up right here. Okay, that's it for today. Just a quick note about what I was doing with the displacement and bump. That's not technically how you should set up displacement and bump in texture painting, but I just thought it was a cool way to play around with uh, other texture properties using the same image as the base color. So I wanted to include it as a way you can kind of experiment and play around with this setup. Anyway, I hope that was helpful. And thanks a lot for watching.